If there has ever been a franchise in serious need of a reboot or revival, you can look no further than Bloody Roar. It's a series of 3D fighting games with the main focus being able to turn into beasts and literally tear your opponents apart. The first entry was released in 1997 in arcades as Beastarizer, which I'm still deciding if that's a cooler name than Bloody Roar, but it was later ported to the PlayStation 1 that year and was met with pretty positive reviews. Now, if you're gonna play a 3D fighting game, especially for the PlayStation 1, Bloody Roar probably won't be your first choice as most people will probably choose something from the Tekken series. And as far as the technicality of Bloody Roar games compared to others, the game is on the simpler side. In fact, you only have one button for punch, one for kick, one for beast attacks, and then one for rave, which pumps up your beast form. So no heavy kicks and light punches like we've seen in other fighting games, even older games like Street Fighter, for example. But having said that, it does make it easier to get into, but it's not as complex as other fighting games. So you will be doing easier combos and knocking people around pretty easily. So it works well for those if this is maybe your first fighting game, getting into this kind of a series. The beast mechanic is the name of the game here. Each character can transform into a beast, and in that form you are stronger, do more damage, and can do more attacks. Your beast gauge builds up throughout the match, and then once you have enough energy, you can transform. The beast forms are a ton of fun. Each character turns into something different, and you can get fun attacks, like when Yugo here turns into a wolf, you can just bite your opponent's neck, or Long can turn into a tiger and just slash your opponents and we do get plenty of blood for emphasis. The characters here, I will say, are a bit uninspired with character names as great as Greg and Alice and Fox, who, you guessed it, turns into a fox. But this is the first entry, and the series does expand over time. One of the things I enjoy most about this game compared to other fighting games of this era is the ability to just blast your opponents across the ring. It really makes each attack so satisfying when you can just run and kick your opponent through a wall from the middle of the ring. In fact, you could almost go as far to say that ring outs in this game are a bit of a problem because of how easy it is to do, but it does add a dynamic to manage during the fights, especially given how powerful you and your opponents are in beast mode. You can even use turning into a beast as sort of a defensive move because it will knock your opponents back if you're tied up in a corner. You can also regain health as well, so the beast mode does work great in a lot of ways. The soundtrack here is great as well. It's mostly rock tracks that serve well for this type of a game, and while there isn't anything memorable, I do think it just fits with this genre. The stages are pretty basic and there aren't really any stages that coincide with the characters as we've seen in other fighting games, but for a PlayStation 1 game, they do look good and this grows over the series as well. There are a few fun unlockable modes like being able to turn off the walls, shorter stages, big head mode, big arm mode, which does add a bit of replay value. The story, like most fighting games, is told through tiny bits at end cutscenes of each character's playthrough, but there isn't really anything special about it, which is pretty much where this game stands. It's a first entry, and I think a good one for a pretty underrated series. Bloody Roar 2 is where things get really going. And then there were a few entries on the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube, and then the series just sort of stops after that. I've always hoped it would come back. I think there is a lot going for it. And even seen here in the first game, getting a newer version on modern consoles, especially with competitive esports crowd like Evo, I think this game could fit well in there. And if you want to play it today, it does vary in price, depending on whether you want a disc version or a complete in-box version. You're looking anywhere from $15 to who knows what kind of version you're getting to $150. So just keep that in mind. Or as always, you can use emulation. But really, I'd go further into the series, which at some point I probably will cover. Bloody Roar 2, I think, is probably considered the best game in the series. Or you can look at something on the GameCube like Bloody Roar Primal fury that might be the way to go if you like this episode be sure to hit that subscribe button or check out our podcast on itunes or come hang out on twitch we'll see you next time and as always thanks for watching